Now, sometimes we act as if Satan won this huge victory. God intended human beings to rule the earth to his glory, and then Satan stepped in and messed it all up, and now God is going to have to be content with saving souls and snatching them out of this world so that they can live as disembodied spirits in the angelic realm forever. But that's not what the Bible teaches. In in Daniel chapter 7, this particular passage, Daniel 7, talks about these nations of the earth. And you've got the lion that Daniel talks about that's Babylon. And then you've got the Medo-Persian Empire that's the bear. And you've got Greece that's like a a leopard. And you've got the fourth beast, terrifying and frightening, that's going to be the Roman Empire. But then he says in verse 9 of Daniel 7, As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire. Here's God on the throne. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. The holy God, similar to Isaiah, with you know, the angels singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, God Almighty. It says, Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. And it's talking of a time where God is going to bring judgment upon the peoples of the earth, the nations of the earth. And then he says in verse 13, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. This is the second member of the triune God, Jesus Christ. The Word became flesh and and dwelt among us. He approached the Ancient of Days, the Father, and was led into His presence. And now here's what becomes relevant. Because you might be thinking, well, what does this all have to do with heaven? Well, it has a great deal to do with it. Because in verse, verse 14 it says, He was given authority, glory, and sovereign powers. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. But if you read this in the context of Daniel 7, it's emphatically clear that this dominion that's being spoken of is a dominion on earth that replaces the dominion of the nations of the earth. These actual nations like Babylon and Persia and, and Greece and Rome. That is something that's going to be managed, that kingdom, to the glory of God. Well, who's going to do the managing? Well, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High will receive the kingdom. That's this kingdom on earth and will possess it forever. So all of these promises of Scripture that have to do with reward and crowns, and you've been a faithful in little, I'll put you over much. And faithful in this, I'll put you over five cities. Faithful in that, I'll put you over ten cities. These are actually real places where people are going to live on a physical earth where we will have physical resurrected bodies. We will not be disembodied spirits for all eternity hanging out in the angelic realm. We will live on a new earth, a transformed earth in transformed bodies, ruling it to God's glory. His plan has never changed. His redemptive plan is to restore the kingdom of this earth to be ruled by his people to God's glory. And that's what scripture says we will experience forever in a new heavens and a new earth.